this disease is variable, which means that people have different symptoms and different levels of severity. Okay, let's try it one more time. <coughs> Just, uh, you, you can slow down a little bit, speak a little bit more clearly. My tongue gets it's fine. myotonia sometimes as well, especially when I'm <laughs> a little nervous and more conscious about it. So <clears throat> I'm ready. I um, became a dolphin trainer at a very young age. Um, I worked for the Navy's Marine Mammal Program. I would walk some exotic animals around the zoo as animal ambassadors. Both my jobs were amazing. It's affecting every muscle in my body, to my face, to my shoulders, to my arms, to my hands, to my fingers, my core, my GI, my bladder, my legs, my ankles, my feet, my calves, every single muscle. I used to be able to run, I can't do that anymore. For me to walk on, on even ground is really rough. I, it's a really high possibility I will fall for sure if I'm on that kind of stuff. And to walk at all is, is a project for me. I mean, I know I'm getting weaker because I'm in a wheelchair, and at first I wasn't. For a long time, I wasn't in my wheelchair, even though I knew I had muscular dystrophy. I didn't come to the wheelchair until maybe 10 years ago. But like when I was 27, I didn't have a long wheelchair for a long time. You know, so and then finally, after a while, it was like, okay, it's getting harder and harder to do things. So, well, I um, I can't walk for a long distance. I get tired really easily, and a lot of times people will say "what" because they don't understand what I'm saying because of the slurred speech. And then when I cook for myself, I need help, a lot of help with that. Because I can't carry like pots full of water or, you know, something heavy. I can't pick it up, so. And I do have problems opening lids, like from, you know, a jar of mayo or a jar of peanut butter and jelly. I have daily frustrations every day um, from getting dressed you know, putting a shirt on and off, doing my zipper, my buttons, um, any little small thing, any little small thing that you need your tips of your fingers for, I cannot do. And, you know, when my husband's at work and I'm at home by myself with the, my son, there's a lot of things I can't do. Um, most difficult activity is getting in and out of a shower and also um, getting dressed because sometimes my muscle will stiffen, so it's hard for me to function. People don't realize when your forearms become weak, uh, your fingers are not dexterous enough, so I can't even take a pen and write anything. I, at, at times, I can't even put my signature down because my fingers aren't dexterous enough to be able to do that at times. That's a combination of, of, of the strength and myotonia, I would say. It's not just the strength, but both the strength and myotonia combined make it very difficult for me to write at times. We went to a muscular dystrophy doctor, and they did all these different tests on my face, you know, and told me I've lost here, I've lost here, I have eye weakness, you know, face weakness. It's such a basic need to communicate, and, and facial expressions are such a big part of it. And if, if you don't have facial expressions, I mean, you lose a lot in, in trying, just trying to communicate. The myotonia in the tongue doesn't allow me to speak at times, so it becomes really embarrassing for me that I'm speaking and suddenly there's 10 seconds of silence and the other person doesn't understand what's happening or you know why am I not responding. People, have even said, why is your speech so slurred? So when I talk on the phone or person to person, I get a lot of what, what? Because they can't understand me. 
it takes, I have to put in extra effort to enunciate my words. Not having muscle strength in my upper body and, and arms impacts um, a lot of my daily activities, such as just being able to you know, prepare food for myself. So my, my partner um, does a lot of that preparatory work for me. Um, which helps with, you know, my actually moving about and getting things together to make a meal, but it also helps with my dysphagia, difficulty eating and swallowing. When you have to come up for breath and you realize that this is a progressive disease and that uh, you kind of have s slowly realized that something has changed. So you get to what Leslie and I call the new normal. Um, where you kind of are like, oh wow, you know, we can't eat pizza together anymore, or you know, just some simple little things like that. Um, but they happen, and I think the kind of the emotional after effect of like, okay, we've hit another kind of low plateau, um, and knowing that more are coming, I think that's probably the hardest part. I do worry about is there going to be a point where you know, my muscles in my throat and esophagus are so weakened that I can't even swallow putting like texture. That That is scary in terms of progression. Like when I swallow, I'll start coughing. Or sometimes it just gets caught in my throat and I can't get it down. I do cough more than I have um, and Sometimes the coughing is difficult, painful, scary, because, you know, at a certain point when you're coughing, especially if you're not coughing up something where you feel like the goal is to get that something out of you and finish your cough, then the anxiety kicks in. And, uh, you know, I'm just well aware that respiratory failure is how a lot of people die. You know, I get an episode of atrial fibrillation maybe once in two to three weeks and the abnormal heart rhythm lasts for 24 to 48 hours and basically my heart rate goes up pretty high during those times so I have to be careful to not exert myself because if my heart rate goes way over then I have a defibrillator inside which would shock me to bring the heart rhythm back to normal and getting shocked is not a pleasant feeling at all. Digestive is my main problem, I think. Trying to go to the bathroom and not being able to. Constipation, I don't want to say that, but yeah, that's my main, I guess, thing. Um, huge GI problems, which I know goes with the disease. Diarrhea, constipation, stomach cramps. I mean, I would stop eating because it hurts so bad to eat. Um, you know, sometimes I wouldn't want to go out with my girlfriends because we were going out to dinner and I didn't want to have stomach pain or bloating or constipation or running to the bathroom to go diarrhea because I just ate something, regardless of what I ate. I can't process cheese. It's just bad news. It'll put me in a lot of pain. I mean, pain, the kind of pain, I can't really explain it, but it'd be pain that I wouldn't want to wish against my worst enemy because it hurt so bad. I mean, they were, they were, they would put me on the floor sometimes. If my dad wanted to go to San Francisco or any of the trip, I won't eat from the time we leave until the time we get to our destination. Because not, not, not the recently, but I did used to have a problem with the controlling my, my valves and that can be a problem. You know, I've had some problems with incontinence, going to the bathroom, peeing my pants. <laughs> you know, I'm now on a pill that old ladies take for not peeing their pants. Um, you know, I have to run to the bathroom a lot. On a road trip, we're stopping every hour to go to the bathroom. You know, it, it, it's embarrassing. It's frustrating, you know. It, you know, my road trip buddies get frustrated that they have stopped so many times. Um, and just, uh, 
having to run to the bathroom for a lot and spending a lot of time in the bathroom, you know, to get your business done is no fun. I'm a lot tired, Maura. I try not to take a nap during the day, but if I lay down pretty much, I'm gonna pass out just because I don't mean to. I just get, I get tired a lot easier. I can sleep eight hours or 16 hours and still feel like I did not sleep at all. So I guess it's just the fatigue gets me max. I don't wanna be tired. I wanna do things, but I get tired very easily. This will tire me out today probably. <laughs> No, I just, I want to do things and I can't. I don't think I could ever go back to work. Um, I don't think I could ever work an eight hour day, regardless of the work, sitting, standing, um, jumping on boats, you know, I, um, it, the fatigue, it's just the daily fatigue of my muscles and my mind, you know? So I don't think I could ever work an eight hour day. And I wish I was a bit cleverer than I am because that has affected my life. Getting a good job or getting good grades. So I wish that, you know, I was a bit cleverer. It does affect personality. It affects um, um, brain, certain brain, brain function and um, processing. I strongly feel I don't want to be on life support systems. You know, it's like, when is that quality of life? You have quality, you don't have quality. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to more than likely be responsible for ending my life. I'm not going to, you know, prolong it with, you know, being on a device where, you know, I can't eat, I can't talk. That's not quality of life for me.